The term thane, from Old English thane, thane, servant, attendant, retainer, one who serves, is commonly used to describe either an aristocratic retainer of a king or nobleman in Anglo-Saxon England, or, as a class term, the majority of the aristocracy below the ranks of Eildor men and high reeves. It is also the term for an early medieval Scandinavian class of retainers. Etymology Old English thane, servant, attendant, retainer, is cognate with Old High German Degen and Old Norse thane. The thane had a military significance, and its usual Latin translation was miles, meaning soldier, although minister was often used. Joseph Bosworth describes a thane as one engaged in a king's or a queen's service, whether in the household or in the country, and adds, the word in this case seems gradually to acquire a technical meaning, and to become a term denoting a class, containing, however, several degrees. But, like all other words of the kind, the word thane was slowly changing its meaning, and, the very name, like that of the Gezeth, has different senses in different ages and kingdoms, but the original idea of military service runs through all the meanings of thane, as that of personal association is traceable in all the applications of Gezeth, after the Norman conquest of England in 1066. William the Conqueror replaced the Anglo-Saxon aristocracy with Normans and the Norman ruling class replaced the Anglo-Saxon terminology with Norman. In this process, kings thens became barons, and thens appear to have been merged in the class of knights, Gezeth in thens. The precursor of the thane was the Gezeth, the companion of the king or great lord, a member of his comitatus. And the word thane began to be used to describe a military gezeth. It is only used once in the laws before the time of Ethelston, but more frequently in the charters. H.M. Chadwick says that the sense of subordination must have been inherent in the word from the earliest time, but it has no connection with the German, Dutch dinen, to serve. In the course of time it extended its meaning and was more generally used. The thane became a member of a territorial nobility, and the dignity of thanehood was attainable by those who fulfilled certain conditions. The nobility of pre-conquest England was ranked according to the heriot they paid in the following descending order. Earl, King's Thane, Median Thane. In Anglo-Saxon hierarchic society, a king's thane attended in person upon the king, bringing with him and his men and resources. Median Thane did not hold his land directly from the king but through an intermediary lord. Status The Thane was inferior to the Ethling, the member of a kingly family, but he was superior to the CEORL, and, says Chadwick, from the time of Ethelston the distinction between Thane and CEORL was the broad line of demarcation between the classes of society. His status is shown by his word guild. Over a large part of England this was fixed at 1200 shillings, or six times that of the CEORL. He was the twelfth hind man of the laws, sharply divided from the twi hind man or CEORL. Gething Kitha, rectitudinus singular in persona in the North Leoda Lager in a document known as Gething Kitha we learn, and if a CEORL throve, so that he had fully five hides of his own land, church and kitchen, bell house and burgate seat, and special duty in the king's hail, then was he thenceforth a thane right worthy, a hide of land was considered sufficient to support a family. And again, and if a merchant throve, so that he fared thrice over the wide sea by his own means, then was he thenceforth a thane right worthy. In a similar manner a successful thane might hope to become an earl. In addition to the thens there were others who were thens on account of their birth, and thus thenhood was partly inherited and partly acquired. Thens and local administration the twelve senior thens of the hundred play a part, the nature of which is rather doubtful, in the development of the English system of justice. By a law of Ethelred they seem to have acted as the judicial committee of the court for the purposes of accusation, and thus they have some connection with the grand jury of modern times. Growing class 
the increase in the number of thens produced in time a subdivision of the order. There arose a class of king's thens, corresponding to the earlier thens, and a larger class of inferior thens, some of them the thens of bishops or of other thens. A king's thane was a person of great importance, the contemporary idea being shown by the Latin translation of the words as comes. He had certain special privileges. No one save the king had the right of jurisdiction over him, while by a law of commute we learnt that he paid a larger heriot than an ordinary thane. After the conquest, tiny in doomsday book in doomsday book oe thane has become tinus in the Latin form, but the word does not imply high status. Doomsday book lists the tiny who hold lands directly from the king at the end of their respective counties, but the term became devalued partly because there were so many thens. Analogies. Compare the separate development of the concept of vassal, from a warlord's henchman to one of Charlemagne's great companions, runestones. During the later part of the 10th and in the 11th centuries, it became common for families or comrades to raise memorial runestones and approximately 50 of these note that the deceased was a thane. Examples of such runestones include SO 170 at Nalberga, VG 59 at Nara Harin, VG 150 at Galanda, Dr 143 at Gundarup, Dr 209 at Glavendrup, and Dr 277 at Rysgard.